my friends I have a big surprise for you I'll show you in a second but we are on the road heading through Georgia on our way to Tennessee because we are headed to Chattanooga today days with Jordan the lion it begins right now say hello to the big surprise he's snoozing but he's back on the road say hi Ja hey there buddy how you doing passing through Atlanta and there's the old Olympic torch I always love seeing that just a cool old relic Tennessee hey there's our destination the big choo-choo John I got us first class accommodations tonight so we are at the Chattanooga choo-choo hotel this is a pretty amazing place. I've already checked in and uh, it's amazing because this was an old railway station. This was the old Southern Railroad and they believe that some of the lyrics for the Chattanooga Choo Choo song may have been based off of this and when they're actually going to tear this down, Chattanooga was going to tear down this building, some investors came in, decided to save it and got it historical status and turned it into a hotel. Now what's cool is that once you walk through the terminal and you go out there, they still have some of the trains there and they've converted them into very unique businesses. And it's a hotel. And we're staying. And of course it was a famous song that Glenn Miller and his band made famous so they have a Glenn Miller flower garden here. As soon as you walk in, look at this. How cool is this? Now one of the unique businesses they have here, they have an escape room. They also have a restaurant that is owned by Norman Reedus from The Walking Dead. And it's got his memorabilia in there. Look at that, how cool is this? And I'll show you a little bit of the history as we go out here. They have placards kind of telling some of it. Glenn Miller Garden. Kind of reminds me of being in Porto, Portugal. On July 4th of 1956, Elvis was here, passing through, took a train through here, and I found a photo of him uh, sitting at the lunch counter, kind of right here, and you can actually see the, the ceiling and everything, and you can see that little room right there over his head. Take a look at that right there. So you see that door up there? And I think that this photo right here was taken right up here. I think it's right here. I think that this doorway right here is the one that's right directly behind Elvis. I think that there used to be a door probably right over here that's no longer there. And I think that that doorway has, that door has changed over here. But take a look right here and see what you think. Do you think that that could have been taken right here? Yeah, I think it probably was right there because I've looked all the way around this lobby and there's no place in here where there's that band that's going right through there that we see. So it looks like this must have changed a little bit, but that looks like that had to have been where this was taken. Which would make sense because the lunch counter photo Elvis would have been sitting right here at the lunch counter and the angle would have been catching that section up there above his head. So as soon as we walk out here, look at this. They've got the Chattanooga Choo Choo right there. It was on March 5th, 1880 that the first passenger train leaving Cincinnati for Chattanooga was nicknamed the Chattanooga Choo Choo. This historical occasion opened the first major link in public transportation from the north to the south. 
The Choo Choo was operated by the Cincinnati Southern Railroad, America's first municipal railway system. Look now, they have fountains, they're just not operating right now. But look at, you can see the, literally the old Chattanooga Choo Choo. And the song itself apparently was the first song to get the, become a gold record. So here's, this is a draft house. They've turned this section of the train into a draft house. And then you can see they have businesses, AKA trains on the other side as well. And it's laid out just like an old terminal, which I love. Jaw, do you like it? Got his seal of approval. So we'll just loop it. Gonna try and show you some of the ambiance of it. And then I'll take you into our hotel room. How cool is that? A lot of places save the trains and they'll leave them out on display for historical value, but not a lot of places will allow places to, or businesses to take them over and make it kind of a meetup spot. See here you can see this is, what is that, bocce ball? And then they told me they're renovating some of the trains right now. You can see some of them are kind of rusting away that need to be restored. Yeah, when I saw this was an option to stay in, I just had to. Down here at the end is where the hotel is. And then they have fountains all over the gardens, but like I said, they're working on them, so none of them are operating right now, but here would be another one. And there's really cool, like you'll see over here, really nice topiary design. Look at that. So now we'll walk up the center section. I believe they also do weddings here. So you can book this out for a wedding. Nice gazebo here in the center. And this section is the Glen Miller Gardens, the Rose Garden. I'll go over here, they have a plaque talking about it a little bit. I'll show you that. It's a sad story, he passed away in a plane crash as well. So many historic, legendary musicians and actors and just sad, always the plane crash. So here it says, the All-American Rose Selection Garden. This garden was designed to celebrate the rose, only flower that's intentionally recognized and known as a symbol of love. So the Glenn Miller plaque must be on the other side. Actually, I just remembered it's inside. I was gonna say I knew I saw one, but I couldn't remember if it was there or not. It's actually inside. Now look at that. This one they do have on. You get the frogs spitting out water. This place is awesome. Then like I said, on the other side as well. It's a nice place to walk a dog too. Because of course, like I said, you have all this nice topiary, a little bit of grass, a little bit of picnic area. And then straight down here is where, I think it's called Neo and Normans, or Nia and Normans, that Norman Reedus owns. And then right here, I think, there used to be a train track that ran right here, and I think that our photo of Elvis in the line with all the men coming towards us, I think that was taken right here because you can tell by the direction of the awning above us and how the, the brackets and everything go outward like that. That it would have been right here. This is such a cool environment. Another fountain. Man, this place would be really booming if they had the fountains on. Here it is, it's called Nick and Norman's. So I'll take Job back to the room and then probably go in there and check out the inside of the restaurant. This whole downtown area is just very cool. Murals everywhere, here you've got a Southern Suites. K 
candy shop selling moon pies. So there's actually little businesses behind the train cars and then like I said they're they've opened some inside this one is one of the escape rooms this far end and I believe there's also a portrait studio here so when the businesses are open you can go in some of them are open actually And then we have a photo of Elvis and the guys while someone's taking their luggage off in front of them. We'll just assume it was right here because all these poles kind of look the same and without, you know, obviously the trains have moved since then. We'll check out a little bit. At least you can kind of walk in between these two. And then I think this is actually rooms because it says private guests. So those are actually rooms they've converted into places you can stay. But like I said, they said they're doing renovations on all the uh, train cars that are going to be rooms. The Joseph W. Graves car. This one says the Dan Williams Jr. car. Oh, look at the old lights. I love the idea. I'm totally all for repurposing these. That just means we'll have to come back and stay here when these rooms are open. We can kind of see in a little bit. Then once you make it to the other end, the formal hotel entrance is right here. And I love the look of this as well. That looks incredible, those gold railings. And when you walk in, it's amazing also. Did you like it when we walked in? All right, if you're parking for yourself and not using valet, this is where you go in. Look at that, isn't that awesome when you come in? This big, beautiful staircase in this lobby. But then over here, they tell you the story of Glenn Miller and the Chattanooga Choo Choo. So you have a little frame of reference. Written in 1941 as a song for Sun Valley Serenade, the movie debut of big band leader Glenn Miller, Chattanooga Choo Choo became top-selling pop hit during the early years of World War II. Spent nine weeks at number one on the pop charts and has been revived frequently. It says, I never went near the South, just wrote a cheerful folksy tune, songwriter Harry Warren told the interviewer Ian Whitcomb. Miller recorded Chattanooga Choo Choo for RCA Victor on May 7, 1941. Record sales had slumped during the Great Depression, but were beginning to rebound by the outbreak of World War II. On February 10th, 1942, RCA Victor's sales manager, W. Wallace Early, appeared on Glenn Miller's Chesterfield Cigarette-sponsored radio show. That night, Miller was broadcasting from New York's Hotel, Pennsylvania. He said it's been a long time, 15 years in fact, since any record has sold a million copies, and Chattanooga Choo Choo certainly put steam and breezed right through that million mark by over 200,000. That's really making a record in more ways than one. He said, and we think that Glenn should get a trophy, the best one we could think of. And that's a gold record of Chattanooga Choo Choo. With that, Early presented Miller with a framed gold plated stamper with an inscription plate. While not as Early notes, the first record to sell one million copies, it was the first gold record. So now let's go see our room. We'll show you what a normal average room and this was um, $100 on the nose per night to stay in this place. You know me, I love to stay in themed places, especially with this Joker. But inside the Chattanooga Choo Choo, oh yeah. So as soon as we walk in, to the left we have 
a decent bathroom. Not huge, obviously, but uh, old building. They're trying to get the most rooms out of it they can, probably. Pretty decent room, honestly. Nothing flashy, but it does have a refrigerator, things like that that you want. Footstool, a few train pictures, a comfortable dog on the bed that comes with the room. Do you come with the room? And then I did like this. You have a sliding glass door out there and you can go sit on the little patio if you want to. So we got two rooms for a hundred bucks. And that's it. So let's go check out the inside of Norman Reedus' restaurant. I kind of want to see what's in there. They said it's pretty cool and kind of laid back, so we'll see what it's all about. All right, here it is, Nick and Norman's. Yeah, they have a couple of pictures of them over here on the walls. Oh yeah, right up there's one of his motorcycles. So I would kind of say it's like bar food. They have a lot of like the, uh, you can see fried pickles and nachos and mozzarella sticks and soups and salads and things like that, pizza. And then on the other side, it's mainly just burgers. Oh, they do have a Frito Chili Smash Burger. I am not interested in that. I ended up just getting the salmon. Whiskey Citrus Salmon, that's what I got. There's Norman Reedus as soon as you walk in. They sell a little bit of merchandise here for the restaurant as well as zombie stuff up there. A little bit of Walking Dead-ish type stuff. Maybe a little bit of a crazy pairing. Black coffee with salmon and sweet potato fries. That might be one of the best pieces of salmon I've ever had in my life. That is really good. Now I found online that they have a pretty cool sculpture park that is free and we can actually walk him through. So I wanna take him over and check out the sculpture park together. Look at all the murals over here. A lot of community stuff. But really great art. I love that. Look at the faces in there. That's what we're looking for. There's a couple of pieces to the art park that you can't actually walk to, but you can see. These two pieces are right here above this drop in this road but we're actually going to be going over there there's another section of the art park over there we're also meeting up with my friend and webmaster leslie and i'm giving her this steve keen beatles painting she loves the beatles i think this big metal thing is supposed to be art as well because you can walk under it i'll show you oh yeah i guess it is it's got a little look at that nice little seating area under it it's like something out of a Tim Burton movie though. That's nice. And the real section that we were looking for starts right down here. River Gallery Sculpture Garden. Well, it looks like they don't allow photography inside without a permit. So I'll just show you a little bit of it right here. And the story to it is that Harry Scott Probasco family came from Lawrenceburg, Indiana to settle in Chattanooga in 1884. The family profession originally was millwork until beginning in the trust and bond business. Um, American National Bank and Trust being the end product in 1938, Scott Livingston Probasco gave this plot to the city of Chattanooga to make a park. And in 1992, Scott Livingston Probasco Jr. and his sisters gave the city of Chattanooga permission for the sculpture garden that nobody's allowed to photograph inside. Wow, look at that house though. Another thing that looks like it's out of Tim Burton. Holy cow, look at this. That's a work of art itself. It's a big sculpture garden too. It's so weird that they would have that rule. So I'll 
just not do the photography inside we can take a look at some of it out here because it does have a great view look at that right over the water They also had a sign that said no pets, and I didn't know that. Uh, online it looked like it was pet friendly. Oh, that's kind of cool though. That sculpture that looks like it's getting ready to go hang gliding off into the water. And there's a big piece right here. Wow, and what a view. Man, they really placed it in the perfect spot. The sculpture garden, pretty amazing view. There's the sculpture garden. I think of everything I've seen, this is the best one right there. That is so cool. Popular place for bicycle riders, I guess. I like these two also, but I think of the two, I like that one the best with the lightning bolt. Leslie's getting to meet Ja. He can't get enough attention. Hey Leslie, so I see you're wearing a TCB hat. We've shown the uh, the Elvis connection to the uh, Chattanooga Choo Choo Hotel where I'm staying. You went to Elvis Week, how was your Elvis Week experience this year? Oh my goodness, the first time I went to Elvis Week was in 2020 and there was nobody there okay it was so empty obviously for the obvious reason this time oh my gosh it was jam-packed I figured it would be and I went um, I went with a friend of mine who had never I mean had never been to Graceland I've been there several times but she'd never been to Graceland and she was like I just want to go to the gate I'm like you have to do the whole thing if you can, if you have the time. I know some people just don't have the time, well, but. We, I mean, we did a whole stretch. We did, we started it in Memphis and then went to Nashville and did Knoxville. That's and great. So we did the whole thing. So she, it was jam packed full of people, but it was amazing because like, I met these ladies who are obviously first generation fans from England who had made their, these beautiful dresses out of Elvis material. Oh, cool. So, I had to go up to them and say, oh my God, you're gorgeous. You know, it's beautiful. Nice. And they were like, no, we didn't make these. I'm like, yes, you did. <laughs> I know I had that material. But um, but no, it was wonderful. It was great. And I think it was poignant mostly because of the anniversary. Yeah. Um, and and probably the movie being out. Yeah. And oh my goodness. And I know you didn't care for the movie very much, Jordan, but it was everywhere. I fit well, that's partially why I was kind of like, yeah, I'll sit this one out. Yeah. It, but I'm glad that you had a good time and I'm glad that it was packed because that's the whole idea is to go celebrate Elvis and appreciate Elvis. Yes. So great to hear so many people made their way out there. Yeah. And they redid the tours this year too. So um, the last time I was like, you could just buy a, a ticket to the house or Elvis Presley's Memphis. Yeah. Now it's like you either do the house and all the planes and all that stuff. Yeah. Or Elvis Presley's or Memphis no. or all together. Oh, okay, okay. Or nice. You could get one of those, you know, really expensive VIP buys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get a tour of the Staples with Priscilla tour, which obviously yeah. I didn't do. Yeah. Yeah, and they make those really limited. Yeah. So, it was but amazing. that's cool. I'm glad you hear you had a great time. Thanks. And look at the apple. That's a great one, too. Oh, wow. Take a look at that statue. It's like a guy dipping a woman while they're dancing. That's probably my favorite of the day. All right, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed our day today. I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing the Chattanooga Choo Choo and what we could show you of the Sculpture Garden. Thank you, Sean McGovern, for becoming my newest Patreon and helping to support this channel. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and please ring the bell for notifications. We will see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.